So Tom Petty was in the Heartbreakers, and then he moved on to join the Travelling Wilburys. And then uh, after all that, he's focusing on a solo career, and now he started up another band, Mud Crutch. So hello and yes, welcome back to another video guys, now then it's time for another album review. Um, now then, because of the release of this album here, uh, Mud Crutch 2, um, I really wanted to do something to celebrate it because recently all I've been doing is talking about Eric Clapton's new album I Still Do, which also came out the same day as Mud Crutch 2. Um, I thought, you know, it's time to show the new Mud Crutch album a bit of appreciation because that is also a really good album. However, the vinyl of Mud Crutch 2 has also been delayed, like the Eric Clapton I Still Do one. They're both coming out the same day, this Friday, so not too far away. Um, but I don't have the vinyl yet, and I've only heard the album twice, so I felt... You know, I shouldn't really be reviewing it yet, because I haven't heard it enough times. I haven't heard it on vinyl. I don't own the vinyl to show you guys. So I thought... Yeah, I shouldn't really be reviewing it, but to celebrate the release of it, I thought I would review their first album, which is self-titled Mud Crutch. And, um, yeah, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the usual. I'm going to uh, give you a bit of information on the album. We're going to go over each track individually. I'm going to mark each of them tracks out of ten. Um, then I'm going to move on to show you my copy of the vinyl record. And at the end of it, I'm going to add up all of the scores, mark them out of ten. Then we're going to move over to my album ranking board, see where it goes on the album ranking board, and... And we'll be done. <laughs> so anyway, let's get started. Mud Crutch. Now there's quite a bit of history behind this band. And it's a really interesting band. Because as I said in the, in in the intro. Um, and now he's formed this band Mud Crutch. He really didn't just form it in 2007. He reformed it. Because Mud Crutch was one of the first bands which Tom Petty was in as a kid. You know, this was one of the bands which um, he formed. And went to um, a record company. Um, in 1970, and they tried to sell themselves. They tried to, you know, get on a record label and become big. And um, so in 1970, they went and they got signed to a record label called Shelter Records. And um, they released a song called The Deport Street, um, which I actually haven't heard. Just a single, seven-inch single. And it absolutely failed in the charts, did not chart at all, did nothing. So in 1975, the record company finally dropped them. They said, OK, Mud Crutch, you're out of it. We don't want you anymore. Um, but what they did is, they didn't exactly just completely get rid of them, they actually split the band up. And um, a few of them went one way and a few of them went the other. And of course, um, some of them went on to become Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, so, you know, uh, Tom Petty and Campbell and um, Tench all went on and joined the other members of the Heartbreakers, while the others were kind of left um, not in the best position. So what happened then is... Um, time went on, you know, Tom Pitt and Heartbreakers became what we know them as today. They had some fantastic albums, and they've had a lot of success, done really well. And um, in 2007, Tom invited um, Randall Marsh and Tom Leiden and, of course, um, Ben Mont, um, all back to do this album. You know, kind of out of the blue. Tom just wanted to get the band back together. Kind of Blues Brothers reference there. Um, get the, So they wanted to reform and... Yeah, they done this album here. They recorded it in two and a half weeks, so um, not a very long album at all to record. And um, it really does surprise me when you hear it, because it really doesn't sound like it was made in two weeks. It really sounds like a lot of effort has gone into it. Uh, but anyway, the album was released um, on the 29th of April 2008. And um, I couldn't find the UK chart positions, but in the US it hit number eight, which is pretty good, considering there is no mention of Tom Petty on the front, the spine, or the back. So, until you open it up, you really can't see, you know, Tom Petty's name anywhere on it. Um, or, or I, well, you can actually see him underproduced, but, you know, he, you know, like Jeff Lynne, you know, he just produced um, Full Moon Fever. He didn't sing on it, so, you know, people might just think he was producing it. So, there's really no mention that this is actually um, a Tom Petty album where he's singing and stuff on it. So, really interesting. Um, but anyway... Um, done very well in the charts, very pleased it did well because thankfully they have come back with another album which is just as good, almost as good I'd say. I've only heard it twice, Mud Crutch 2, but I still think I prefer the first one a little bit. But um, the second one is still incredible, done a really good job, I'm pleased they've come back and I can't wait to hear the third one already. Fingers crossed there's a third one that is. Uh, but anyway, let's get started with this album because there is a grand total of 14 tracks, the album is full. 
Um, so anyway, it opens up with a cover song called Shady Grove, which is a very popular kind of country song, a bit of a country vibe to this song. Um, opens up, opens the album so well, because this album has very country, blues kind of feel to it. And it's really good, because the acoustic is great. Um, I love how the drums kind of kick in, you know, they do the one verse of guitar, dun, 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 dun. and then all of a sudden on the next verse, the drums kind of kick in, and the song just picks up right there and then. And then for the next verse, oops, sorry, I'm, I'm drinking Lucas today, so sorry, the, the, the gas is all bubbling up in me right now. <laughs> uh, but Tom Leiden actually takes, um, uh, Tom, Tom Leiden and Petty um, both kind of um, take a verse each. Leiden comes in first as a verse, They'll hit the chorus, and then Petty will come back and do the next bit. But um, it's great because he has a great... I mean, we all know Tom Petty has a great voice, but Leiden also has a great voice. Um, sounds really, really great. He sings it so well. His vocals suit the song so well. And then they come together, and their vocals blend so well in the chorus part. It really is a very fun song. Um, and, and, you know, really, really fun. I, I love the guitar work in it. It has a small little guitar solo kind of bit about halfway through which is great as well and um, yeah as it's a cover song I don't want to quite give it a 10 but I want to get it as close to a 10 as I can so I'm going to give that track a 9 out of 10 and then we move on to my favourite track on the whole album Scare Easy um, a, written by Tom Petty and it's a pretty it's a slower song with um, really interesting guitar riffs basically going on through the background but the lyrics are really quite amazing. <laughs> I love how they kind of um, flow into each other and they, the lyrics don't really make sense too much but then they kind of do because the chorus kind of brings it together well. I'm not doing it justice, you guys need to hear it and he hear it for yourself but um, really great. Um, the vocals again from Petty are great. I can't you know speak highly enough of this song, it's going to be a 10. Scare Easy, fantastic track. Um, no flaws on it whatsoever. And then we get a track called um, Orphan of the Storm, which is another Tom Petty written song. And um, a more calm song, a lot more calm. I mean, it's still kind of slow, kind of at the same pace as the last one. But um, definitely takes it back, tones it down a bit, a lot slower. A lot more of a relaxed, easy listening kind of feel song. Uh, but it has nice keyboard work in the background. And the first two tracks really don't show off the keyboard work. Hugely well, the piano work. Um, but this song really does. Uh, first time you really get to hear them. Which is really good. Um, and it kind of makes the song stand out a bit more from the first two. Because the first two are very acoustic heavy. This one here, still pretty acoustic heavy. But, you know, the piano kind of breaks it up. Makes it a bit more different. Um, which is really good. And I like the lyrics. Just about an orphan boy, you know. Um, wanting to get out of the orphan. What he sees when he's an orphan. Really interesting lyrics. And a really fun song overall. I'm going to give this track a 9 out of 10. And then the next track up is Six Days on the Road, which is an Earl Green written song. So another cover one here, but this is more of a fun rocking song. You hear it from the word go. It's like it, the guitars kind of come in and, it, you know, it kind it's kind of going back to Shady Grove kind of pace. But it's like, it sounds like it wants to be a rock and roll song, but they're giving it a bit of a country vibe at the same time. So it's a really interesting mixture of the two genres of music. Uh, but the great bass work in it from Tom Petty, I have to say. The bass work in this song is what stands out for me. Really good. And I really like the piano in the background again here. Because it kind of bounces off the guitar work on it, which sounds phenomenal. And um, yeah, again, I'd probably say, again, the piano is kind of picking up even more in this song. It's like each song, it kind of gets a little bit better and better. Until we get to a certain song where the piano is just amazing. But we'll get to that one. Um, but anyway... I had a great guitar solo in it as well, but um, compared to the previous three tracks, it's not quite as good, I can't lie, the previous three are all so catchy. This one is very catchy as well, but it's a cover song, so at the same time, it's like, you know, it doesn't really matter if they're cover songs, if they're still enjoyable, they're still enjoyable. But trying to mark them out of ten, you know, as I didn't write it, it's kind of like I feel like I have to take at least one point off. Uh, but I'm going to give this one an eight out of ten, so... Uh, for you guys who haven't watched my reviews before, as I always say, anything above a 5 is good, so an 8 is really good. Uh, anyway, next track up is Crystal River, and oh my god. Now you guys probably won't be surprised that I love this track so much, because you guys know I'm a huge blues fan. I love all the greats like Eric Clapton, B.B. King, Robert Johnson, Muddy Waters, and my one of my favourite albums of all time is Derek and the Dominoes' Other Assorted Love Songs. Um... 
which is really interesting because they're all about seven eight minute tracks and they all have this great bluesy uh, kind of raw feel to it and this track here crystal river which is written by tom petty really has it really reminds me of a modern country kind of sounding Derek and the dominoes because there's a seven eight minute long track um it's a lot slower than the previous um song because it mainly focuses on guitar it has this real bluesy feel through the lead guitar and also what blues tracks um have a habit of doing is they'll repeat the line they'll say um one verse they'll say, they'll say sing one line and then all of a sudden they'll repeat it and then go into the chorus and that's exactly what this song does really reminds me of a bluesy song and it's kind of like this song also gives each member of the band a minute to show off and show what they can do. Um, so I really feel like every member of the band gets a minute to shine in this song. And then in the last minute of the song, they pull it all back and go straight back into the vocals. Because, you know, about three, four minutes of the track is just instrumental. So the song works on so many levels. The lyrics are fun. The guitar work is incredible. Um, it stands out. On this album like a sore thumb you can you know you, you know it's this song when you're hearing it um 10 out of 10 track love it 10 out of 10 okay so after that great track we go on to omara um which is another tom petty written song and it's a fun little catchy guitar riff song really the lyrics are okay on this one but the vocals are what really stand out on this song for me really good vocal performance here from tom i think but um I don't know, there's something about this song, it just seems, I think it's um, the flow here of the album. The album was flowing so well, and this one is a really good song still, so I don't want to sound harsh on it, because I still enjoy it when I hear it. But it's just, compared to what we've heard already on the album, it's definitely a weaker one. But I still like it, so I, I'm going to give this one a 7. Really good song still. And then we got This Is A Good Street, which is written by Ben Muntz. Um, Tench, Benman Tench. I didn't think I, I don't think I said his second name earlier, so we're just calling him Tench now, <laughs> um, because it's like there's two Toms on this album, so I really should be referring to surnames on this album. So we're gonna go by surnames now, Tench. Anyway, so um, he wrote this song really interesting. Actually, it's just singing about you know my street. It's a good street, good homes here, got good everything down this road. It's a good street. So it's like never heard of some guy sing about his street before, but that's new. But hey, I like it. Um, so anyway. Good, good song. He takes lead vocals on here as well, um, with Tom doing backup ones, and then he comes in to help him out in the chorus. Uh, but yeah, fun song. Um, great lead guitar work on it, I think. And um, yeah, again, doesn't stand out. I'm gonna, I kind of have similar feelings to the last song um, with this one, so I'm gonna give this one a seven out of ten as well. And then we move on to the second vinyl in here. So we'll say, uh, yeah, we are halfway through the album now. And the next track up is The Wrong Thing To Do. Now, I was really debating whether to give this one an 8 or a 9. So this one was really difficult. Um, but I love this song. It's a Tom Petty song. Um, it's a bit more of a rocking song with um, Petty back on lead vocals, of course. Um, it's a bit of an average song, I'd say. You know, that's why I was kind of thinking, okay, an 8. I mean, I like it a lot. But for this album, it's one of their more average songs. But then it hits the chorus. And the chorus is fantastic. Um, you know, it ends with this pause. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he's doing the chorus, and then it, the, 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 all the instruments kind of cut out, and Tom just kind of goes down the mic. I don't care. And then it takes this couple second pause, and then it comes back with this fantastic, fantastic. I mean, it is great guitar solo, and it generally sounds bloody really good. I like it a lot. But then. This I wanted to give it a 9 at this point, but then, uh, you know, when I look at it overall, it's like, okay, so there's the chorus part and the guitar solo is incredible. That's only about a third of the song. So I am going to knock it down and give it an 8 out of 10, but I love this song. It really is a great one. And then we get um, one of Leiden's songs. I think this is the first one he wrote on here, maybe the only one. Um, yep, yeah, only one he wrote on here, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but this one here is... Um, Queen of the Go-Go Girls. So that kind of sounds like a fun track. And actually, it's not super fast. It's pretty slow for the album. Um, but it's more of a light-hearted song. It's just really easy listening. Uh, Lena takes lead vocals on here with um, Petty coming in in the background again. Um, and the lyrics are really good. But um, I, I kind of find with this song, you know, it just doesn't change much. It's a very good, very fun song. Very innocent, loving song. But... It doesn't do enough to make me want to give it a super high mark. But I still like it a lot, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. 
And then we get to the instrumental track called June Apples. And you guys know me, I like instrumentals. I actually really enjoy them. Um, so I never want to sound like I'm being too much of a old fart by saying, oh, it doesn't have no vocals, I don't like it. Because I really do enjoy instrumentals. But I like the instrumentals that change and develop. And while the first minute of this song is really fun, it's like, this is a fun tune, I like it. For a four minute, for well, I think it's nearly four minutes, for a four minute piece, it really doesn't do anything. It's got this really fun tune, and for the first minute, it's like, okay, I like it, but that's it. You are, you've got this tune for the whole four minutes. So it's like, I think what they needed to do is they needed to layer some more um, work over the top. Maybe some, uh, you know, or guitar solos or something. Just, or just maybe slow it down a bit and then pick it back up. Uh, just to break the song up and make it a bit more interesting. But, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of this track. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 10. Um, I would have given it a 5 to say it was an average song if there was just maybe a guitar solo in there over the top or something. I mean, the guitars do have different moments in it, but not enough to make it stand out. Um, but anyway, that is the only track on the album which I'm not too keen on, and I hate to say it because it sounds like I've just... It sounds like I just don't enjoy instrumentals, and I really do. Just This one isn't a very good one. Um, and then we get the track Lover of Bayou, which is a cover track, but... Oh, why did it have to be a cover? Because this would easily be a 10 out of 10, really. Because I, I it starts off with uh, a lot, really rocking kind of um, uh, in tune. It just sounds so fun and fresh. Um, a really fun song with great vocals from Tom over the top. Fantastic guitar work. But as I say, as it is a cover, I feel like I can't quite give it a 10. Um, so I am good, but I'm gonna, again, I want to give, like Shady Grove, I want to give this as close to a 10 as I can get it, so I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. Great track, love it to bits. Then we get a track called Topanga Cowgirl. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, I think, I'm pretty sure it's right, but anyway. Written by Tom Petty again, great lyrics, just, you know, cowgirl, he's watching her, he's fantasizing about her, he likes her, all that stuff. Anyway, the lyrics pretty simple, but they're fun, they're good enough. This is the song where the piano really stands out for me. It really does sound really good here. And, um, yeah, I, it is just such a fun song. Um, great guitar rift in it. It's slowly added over the top. It's kind of like it starts off with, a, you know, this kind of piano beat. Guitar slowly comes in in the background. And then the next verse, the bass will start to kick in from Mr. Petty. And it becomes a really fun song. I really like it. It has a great guitar solo in it too. It's like this song has everything. Um, however, you know, it just um, it doesn't quite capture me as much as some other tracks on here. So I'm going to give that one an uh, I'm going to give that one an eight out of ten. And then we move on to the track "Bootleg Flyer" and another Tom Petty written one here. And oh my god, the vocals from Tom here are incredible. It starts off and it's like. It's, is that Tom? Is that, apparently it is. It's really interesting. Um, he does this kind of uh, really low, kind of gritty vocal performance. And then he'll come back to his normal vocal performance for the next verse. And then he'll go back down low for a bit. It's like very interesting. Um, very interesting song. Really, um, you know, it's like he... It's, it's very, it's a very well pieced together constructed song. And it says it's a very well constructed song. So it goes into all these different parts and it's really good. Um, 9 out of 10. Great track there. And then we're on to the last track already. House of Stone, which is a nice slow country song to close the album. Um, really beautiful, very catchy song with some really good guitar work over it. A um, little bit short, that song, unfortunately. But that one there, I am going to give an 8 out of 10 to because I do like it a lot. So there we are. We've gone over all of the tracks. Now let me show you my copy of the vinyl record. So here it is. Um, we are going to mark the um, album artwork as well out of 10. And I actually really love the cover. It's a very strange cover, but I like it a lot. And here's the back cover, which... Yeah, it's a bit plain, and you can actually see um, Tom Petty's name there. So his name is on the jacket, but um, only on the producer. Um, and he's got a little um, bit there which he's written down. Um, and then we got all the tracks there split onto two records. And here is the gatefold. So you've got an uh, amplifier with mud crutch written on. You've got the band and some more information down the bottom there. On the band, and this is one of them really thick records where you know they've binded the spine, so it's you know really thick. If something whacks that, it's not going to dent into easily. 
So really well done. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you the second record because you also get something else in the sleeve. Which has just fallen out. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll show you the record first. So um, On Reprise Records of course, like um, all of Tom's albums are. Um, I think... I think since this album, maybe one before. I know Mojo, um, back there, and Hypnotic Eye. And um, I'm pretty sure Mud Crutch 2 are all on this label. So, um, yeah, all of the new Tom albums are on um, Reprise. But, and then, of course, what you do is um, you don't get a download code, which is a little bit disappointing, but you get something better. You get the actual CD. So you don't just use the download code once. Your computer breaks. You lose the download code. You have to go buy the CD. Nope, you've got the CD here forever, which is fantastic. I love it when they do that. But, um... Yeah, not really much to it. I would like to get a physical copy of this album, but um, on CD. But you know, it's not really necessary because I have it in here. Just you know, it looked nice to have both Mud Crutch albums together on CD. But as I say, it's no big deal really. I mean, the only problem is with this album is um, the CD is actually still quite expensive. It's about nine pounds. So it's like I'd say get the vinyl because you get the CD with it. So. Um, but album artwork wise, I'm going to give it a 7. That's because, you know, I like the cover, but the back cover isn't too great. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, now it's time to mark this album out of 10. So what I've done is I've actually added up all of the scores which I've given each track and the artwork. So that's 14 tracks plus the artwork. So I've added up all the scores and divided them by 15. And this album is going to get a solid 8.5 out of 10. So an 8.5 for Mud Crutch. Um... Now what's, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the album ranking board and put it on there. So yes, here we are at the famous album ranking board. Famous, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so then here we are. We have Mud Crutch's Mud Crutch there with an 8.5. So then that's going to go... going to put it right there, smack... Oh, there we go. Cupboard door's bending backwards. Look at this techno. Look, I'm the high budget on this channel. But there we go, right in the middle. So it's going right between Eric Clapton's Back Home with a 9.2 and Lindsay Buckingham's Going Insane with a 7.1. So Mud Crutch has managed to beat out Lindsay Buckingham Going Insane, Paul McCartney's McCartney, George Harrison's 33 and a third, Phil Collins Face Value, uh, The Who Face Dances, and can't even see it, well, you can just, John Lennon and Yoko Ono sometime in New York City. But however, Eric Clapton's Back Home has beat out with 9.2, and of course, Derek from the Dominoes, which of course has already come up once in this video, all the way at the top there with a 9.4. Will anything beat it? We'll have to wait and see in the next album review. So yes, that's it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I think that was a very good spot for Mud Crutch. I'm really excited to be getting the new Mud Crutch 2 album, of course, and you guys can expect either next week or the week after a review of this. And we'll see how well it does compared to the first Mud Crutch album, because really, they are both like this. They are both equally great albums. So if you haven't heard them, and you like Tom Petty, they're must-pickups, because if I was to do a ranking of Tom Petty's albums, these Mud Crutch albums, both of them would rank in the top five, probably. They're that good. So make sure you go check them out. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a message. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. I don't care easy.